okay, this is, this is my hope, and this is out of left field. I'm just going to say it. I have a belief it's not just that they're trying to kill them with such regularity. It is that the banks are on the point, on the verge of failing. We need to move the timetable up. It's not a political election issue. This is a monetary issue. The banks are about to fall apart. And if that happens, you're going to have people saying, hey, where my, where's my life savings? You have people saying, I have a pension. What happened? It's gone. And you have other people saying, I've got income. It's from this and that other source. It's gone. Everybody's paralyzed. Not going to not gonna work. So well, they might have moved. What they're saying that's what repo was last year this, to to prop up the banks. And I know. And yeah. now you're seeing the 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 Weimar extension to that yeah. with enormous stimulus and it's really just it's just monet it's monetizing. monetizing. We're monetizing the economy. Did you see the article about that you retired guy from UPS who just had his pension cut from uh, 5200 down to 3100? Yeah, I'll see if I find it. If I do, I'll send it to you. So he, he had. I, I was shocked when I read that for a UPS driver. Well, it's typical. That's a working class pension, and you know, bear in mind the central states pension fund, which was a, a dominant Teamsters fund in all the you know central U.S. for the truckers. They had a 50, 60 percent cut, and, and they had an increase in their contributions. All the worst and an increase in eligibility age. Those are the three curses. I'm getting less. I'm paying out the, the other ones are paying out more. And, and then the young ones say, oh, I got to wait a long time before I'm even qualified. Okay. The, the, the three curses are all over the place in the pension system. My father is part of the TIAA CREF. It used to be exclusive universities and colleges. And about 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it, it, it expanded to include research institutes and foundations. So academia and institutions. And no cut yet, but gee, what do they depend on? I, my father back in 2004 or so said, Jim, I want you, you know, we're, did, we're done with lunch now and thanks for coming over and mowing the lawn. And that's what I used to do. I'd go over to my dad in his 90s and I'd mow the lawn, I'd do, I'd do stuff. And my mother would, she'd, she'd you know, fritter around with the bushes and make it all look nice. But she said, can you mow the lawn, Jimmy? Yeah, I can mow the lawn. And my dad said, Jim, I want you to take a look at this big binder. Uh, I asked for the TIAA CREF book of investments. <laughs> it was 150 pages. You know, malls in San Diego, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Chicago, St. Louis, Malls everywhere. They own malls. Yeah, well, they're in bad shape. They own huge amount of stock portfolios, corporate bonds. How are the corporate bonds doing? Okay, so they've got a couple of hurting areas. I think I'm going to hear very soon my dad telling me that he's got two different pensions and one of them was cut by 30%. That's what I'm expecting to hear. And that, okay, remember, what did it take for the cold water to hit my sister? The lockdown and her office is now the dining room table. What's it going to take for cold water to hit my dad? 30% cut on one of his two pensions. Now, he gets Social Security and he gets two pensions, and he does very well. He said, Jim, I have no worries at all about money. My worries are a good bowel movement and getting out of the chair in under five minutes. He's got a method for getting out of the chair. He goes to his knees. He turns around and he uses the chair to lift up. So it takes me sometimes two minutes. You know, I used to do that when I injured my back, slip the lower disc on my back. I, it seemed like every five, seven years something, I do that. And it, yeah, how do I get out of bed? Oh boy, lean around, get on my knees, knees on the floor. Okay, that, that's my dad's troubles right now, not money. But there are a lot of people in South Florida. I've got a client. Oh, boy. He's also a source of information. You know who you are, Don, um, if he's listening to this. Oh, no, he's not listening. Okay, but anyway, I don't want to give away anything. He said, Jim, I know, I know a dozen people who are struggling to eat right now, and they're all in my community. 
we live together, we play together, we go for walks together, we go on the beach, we hunt for seashells together, and several of them are very, very hurting right now because their pensions are down, because their pharmaceutical costs are up. They're on five different medications and they can't pay for it all. And he said, they are the quintessential examples of, do I buy food or do I buy drugs? I can't do both. And he helped some of them. And his, his daughter has lost her job. There's no more, it, 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 because of the Corona rules, her job's gone. They, they can't have the different events that she used to organize. They can't do that. My brother's lost his income. Wow. My sister is not. My dad has not lost his pension. So <clears throat> this is a strain on society. I got, I got one friend, a guy I used to live with. He said, Jim, I'm ready to die. Yeah. I don't have any income. Uh, my best friend just died where I had a free place to live. Now I'm living temporarily with one of our other friends, but it won't last long because she said, you know, it's kind of temporary. I said, you think it might convert to, to permanent? She said, I don't know, Jim. I'm ready to go. He said, you know, if you take away the NFL, you take away college football, I'm definitely ready to go. Oh, boy. And, and he's just a few years younger than me. He's young 60s. Nice guy. But he's one of my no college education guys who knows about what viruses are. Woo, hey, he surprised me on that one. Wow, wow. Well, I know how you feel about gold. Silver is probably more speculative. And what about people moving into cryptos? Do you think that's even more speculative than silver? Well, it doesn't even sound like you think silver's speculative. It sounds like you think silver is a slam dunk. Not at all. I think your your opinion needs to be upgraded. Well, that's what the marketplace will say. I, I actually am a big fan of silver. Well, screw the marketplace. Okay. If the marketplace is so smart, why they move silver up 50%, have a correction that's still up 50%. Did gold go to 2700 Not yet. Okay. Um, Not in dollars. I, I, I'm not being fair. If it were 1600 did gold go to 2400 No. Okay, silver's outperforming. Um, and it's only halfway to its high. Yeah, well, can we do an inflation adjusted basis on that 50 high? Right, I, right. Uh, it's not even close to it now. We, I think the inflation adjusted to the 50 is what, like 300 400 yeah, let, let me let me give people an idea of what inflation adjustment does to the gold price. If in 2013 you had a 1200 price, it's been 1900 now. 1200 then is 1900 now equal. We've gone nowhere. We haven't even begun. All we're doing is taking out old highs that are psychological marks on a wall. We haven't even begun. We're going to be moving to 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. I got it on good authority from Maxwell, my guy, that the move to 3,000 will be very quick once we get past 2,000. Mm -hmm. Now, you remember back in the 90s where we got the 3,000 on the Dow and then, oh my gosh, look how fast we got to 4,000 on the Dow the Dow Jones Industrial Index. Wow, look how fast we got to 5,000 on the Dow. Wow, look how fast we got to 6,000 on the Dow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. No overhead resistance. No, it's not just that, but no limit to the money. Money supply coming in, where's it going? No resistance to put it into the financial sector. In the 70s, there was no resistance to put it into the working class sector, into the economy, into the real business economy. My first two pay raises at Digital Equipment Corp in 70 and 71, I'm sorry, 80 and 81 were 12%. Does anybody get a 12% raise now? I actually got into a firefight in the second year when I got a 12% raise because I found out the dumbest guy in our group also got a 12% raise. Okay, my point is that 
we haven't even begun. We're going to see $50 silver by the end of the year. If not the end of the year, we'll see it January, February. We're going to see, I think, $100 silver in the next couple of years. It's not even going to be a challenge. It's going to turn a lot of so-called financial experts on their ear because they think it's a commodity. I got news for them. It's a strategic metal of the highest order on the planet. I could explain in, in a little tangent why silver is so important. I choose not to. I'm tired. Silver is going to become a managed strategic global metal for energy, technology, and weapons. It's not like copper. Copper, they call, you know, got a doctorate in economics, you know, what are the three areas? You got automobiles, electronics, and home plumbing. Well, home plumbing is changing. There's a lot of PVC tubing, plastic tubing. Silver just has it all over copper. I noticed that there was a new silver application several years ago. And I thought, this is amazing. Yet another really cool, unique silver application. It was for pressure treated lumber. You know, you got the little green crap on the end. That means it's pressure treated with the chemicals. It means insects just don't want to live there. Okay. And Several years, 10 years before that, you had anti-burn treatment ointment, silver-based, miracle cures. Silver, they find a new usage for silver every few years. You got solar panels. You know, okay, maybe solar panels is going to get trumped. There'll be a jump shift, and it won't be all that important in, in several years. But I got news for people. There are plenty of countries that are not really advanced, and they're not going to do a jump shift. They're going to go to solar plan panels. I mean, I love the, the big display in Barstow, California, concentrated solar beams, and man, oh, man, that is so advanced. I say to the naysayers of silver, Get back to me in three or four months. Let's see if you've shit in your pants. Let's see if you've ruined your reputation. We're having a debate right now within the jackass colleagues. A couple of them think that silver's not going to continue like this. Mm -hmm. It's really just, uh, you know, it's a matter of a big push with the Sprott Fund, buying $1.5 It's a big issue of shutdown mines in Chile and Mexico and Peru. And, you know, you're going to get these mines coming back online and maybe you'll find a nice stable area between 20 and 25 for silver. Oh, really? Get back to me when we're 35. I'm very confident about this uh, because I've got my, uh, my Maxwell guy, my Maxwell banker. And uh, he's a lot smarter than I am. You know, there's something that's called emotional intelligence IQ. Emotional IQ, EIQ. I got very high scores in that. I got higher scores in EIQ than I did in basic intelligence IQ. I was never the best in my class. I was always the top three. I was never 140 IQ. I was always 130 something. 